And and I've heard some great questions this morning. One of the things that we want to do, we have a great relationship with SAMHSA, and SAMHSA has some pretty good uh, uh, individuals that help advocate at the national level. We've got some surveys on each one of the tables. I want you guys to take some time and write your comments after we're done. Uh, write your comments and make sure we get those because we're going to pass those on and we want to make a difference on the way things start to shape up in Missouri um, and, and across the nation as that goes. Um, who's familiar with the donut hole, the Medicare donut hole? I knew you would be. The affordable health care, the way it stands is going to eliminate that. How awesome would that be? That would be awesome. I know you guys... Uh, I'm not, I don't get Medicare or Medicaid, but I know you pay up to $2,800 and they say, yeah, we're doing good. And then you're just stuck until you get what up to $6,400. That's tough. It's got to be tough. Most of the receiving Medicare or Medicaid are, are those individuals that have a very limited uh, budget probably to start with, right? So these are the types of things that affordable health care is wanting to offer to eliminate those donut holes so you guys can receive the services throughout, not stop halfway in the middle and make you pay up to a certain amount. So we want you to receive services, but you know, the way it's, the way it's proposed right now, each state has the opportunity to um, create their own exchange. And that exchange will consist of navigators and those navigators will help get people enrolled into the insurance exchange, if you will. If a, and help me with the date, if a state does not um, it create their own exchange. What is it, 2013? 2014. January 1st, 2014. If a state does not have an exchange set up, the federal government will put a model or what they have created in place for an exchange to take place. So it's going to take... I hope and I pray that the state of Missouri even though they've been hard-headed up until this point, will take a stand and create their own exchange that's best for the people uh, of the Missourians in the state. There's no guarantee. So once again, we're coming back to that. We want to help motivate advocates that will call the legislators, will get involved in... But we want to help educate and get people to become advocates so we can reach out to our legislators they would say, hey, we want an exchange, we want an exchange that uh, uh, is something that will help us that's not something that the federal government um, puts in place because that's not, that, that's not geared to Missouri. There are some of those questions like concerning what physicians, which general practitioner doctors are going to accept Medicaid. That's one of those questions that can't be answered right now because we don't... There, you would be, it was just a staggering number of how many uh, different doctors are going out of the general practice and going into a specialized practice because they don't want. But we've had some great conversation with the Missouri Nurses Association where the uh, nurse practitioner is going to hopefully in the near future take the place of what the general practice or physician would be able to diagnose or be able to sign off on a prescription or things of that nature. So it's some of these questions are hard, but they're valid questions, and that's why we want to get your comments. We want to get your thoughts on what needs to be addressed. So make sure and write those down because we just don't know. Uh, because there's a, I tell you, the physicians right now are, are not the happiest uh, group of people as far as affordable health care goes. Provide support subsidies to help pay for coverage. Um, control insurance company spending limits. Administrative costs to twenty percent. What does it mean to you? That's the big question. What does affordable health care mean to you? What does it mean to you? Uh, when I think about affordable health care for me, it, it means I, I, I can af maybe f afford health care for my family and I can pay my house payment as well. Because right now it's one of those, do I get insurance or do I make a house payment? Well, right now, as it stands, I'll tell you personally, I have a health savings account. I sock a little money away and I hope nobody gets sick. And that's what we just hope for. So what it means to me is maybe for the first time that there's, a, there's care out there that is affordable that we can get. But as we have bullet points up there, any group health plan must treat diseases equally for coverage approvals. This is one of those that, that, that is, um, is good. It's exciting to see that they have to compete or they have to treat the diseases equally. Um, I, I've seen it. I've seen it in the past. They don't, they don't treat them equally, do they? Or more, that, that, that's, that's what we're looking at. If we can get 10 of the same concern from the same district, that legislator is going to take notice. That's what we've been told at the state level. 
That's when the legislator gets notice. So it's up to each one of us in our in our regions, in our districts, finding out who the legislator is. You can go to morecovery.org and find out who your legislator is in your district. Make sure you get aware of them, aware who they are, find out about them, and contact them multiple different ways. Email, handwritten letter. Don't be afraid to call them. They're just people, I promise you. Make an appointment and go see them. We'll do, we're doing an advocacy day next year. Uh, we'd love to see every one of you there. We'll help walk you through the, the Capitol and, and we'll get you uh, feeling more comfortable talking with your legislator. But one, the last two bullet points here, uh, there's no insurance discrimination for pre-existing conditions. That's a great bullet point. Insurance coverage for community members who have not previously qualified. The federal health reform, or what we have been uh, calling Affordable Care Act, or ACA, um, it has, was signed into law uh, March of 2010. This is more commonly known as you guys have called it as Obamacare. Limited provisions immediately and scheduled for full implementation in 2013. You guys realize it's 2012, right? This is next year that this is coming into effect. So I encourage you to, to take some time. Come talk to me. Come talk to Brenda. Shelly's part of the, the MRM board. Come find us. We want to hear your concerns, and we want to help you put together some sort of contact with your legislator because this, this is next year. 2010 is like, oh, well, that's a couple years away. It's not, that, it's not that way anymore, okay? It's currently under review by the Supreme Court. This was made before the Supreme Court said... They said it's okay. Now, this was one of the big things that we dealt with in Missouri with that the gag order that I told you about. The Supreme Court upheld the mandate. Now, it, I, I, I may get in trouble for the wrong person to hear me. It's not a mandate, is it? What is it? It's a tax. It's become a tax. Either sign up for health care, buy into the system, or you will pay a tax. Okay? You have the choice. It's not much of a choice. But you either get health care or you pay a tax. And that's what the Supreme Court has upheld. Some states, including Missouri, have filed exemptions and challenges to the participation in the law. There are those states out there that are still fighting it. And some people will look at that. Well, that's a horrible choice. I have to either pay a tax or I have to get insurance. Well, here's the thing. You're paying taxes anyway, and those taxes are going to the individuals that go to the ER and have no health coverage at all. If we buy in now, long term, we're going to come out better on the bottom line. Okay. Provisions of ACA reform insurance markets to make them more competitive, protect consumers' right, no exclusion due to pre-existing conditions or lifetime caps on coverage, establish basic minimum benefit of packages and address, addresses health disparities and racial and ethnic populations. This is a national number, 52 million Americans uninsured. After affordable health care is implemented fully, it'll drop to 22 million. In the state of Missouri, it's supposed to drop to 250,000 people uninsured. Tell them how many are uninsured now. Uninsured right now is just over 4 million. No, in Missouri. Missouri, I'm sorry, uh, 800,000, almost a million. Wrong number. 800,000 are uninsured in the state of Missouri right now. So, and you may not agree with what I'm saying. I, I'm looking. I'm, I'm. I'm basing this on statistical information. I'm basing this on research that we've done as a Missouri Recovery Network and information that's given to us by SAMHSA, Faces and Voices of Recovery, and a lot of big players at the national level. It, it, sometimes it doesn't make sense to those that you know. Well, I don't want to. I don't want to have the choice to have either have to pay a tax or I have to buy health coverage. It's one of those, we're paying taxes anyway. What are those tax dollars going to? Would you rather pay into a system that you can use or would you rather pay into a system that everybody else is using and you don't get any benefit from? That's my personal opinion. You may not agree with it. But go do some of the research. Do some of the reading on what the affordable health care is about. And, and I think you'll be uh, enlightened. Uh, health care reform, what can change do? Understand the changes. Share your experience with other, others and advocate for needed improvement. Educate your family and community. Next one. The statewide learning network of the Missouri Recover Network initiated in 2012. We're working on two grants which allows us to go out and help educate people about affordable health care. These, uh, these different meetings are in the county and regional levels. 
um, also statewide. Um, we have determined current level of resources and we are recommending additional services and encouraging participation from other organizations to help educate people about affordable health care. We've been educating people and asking them to attend meetings. We're assisting in the identification to important partners for the project. And each one of the, the organizations that we go and, and we present and we talk with, we're asking them to uh, sign up with us, partner with us with you uh, in the form of an MOU or Memorandum of Understanding. That as we pass on information, they would pass it on to those. And like I said, I'll do my disclaimer again. You may not agree with anything that I've said today, but my hope is today that you would hopefully get motivated to educate yourself, that you become a better advocate for what you believe in. Because we want to provide uh, a system of care for those. And this is some contact information. We'll leave that up. But some of the frequently asked questions, and we've put these sheets out on your table. We've got how many? There's a few minutes left. Five, probably. Ten minutes left. We can do a lot in ten minutes, can't we? Frequently asked questions. I like to go those. Will the health reform law require nearly all Americans to have health insurance starting in 2014 or pay, or pay a fine or a tax? Answer that's yes. Will the health reform law allow government panel to make decisions about end-of-life care for people on Medicare? This is what they're calling the death panels. Well, that's one of the things that, they, that they, they have, they've opted out of as far as what people have called them death panels. Number three, will the health reform law cut benefits that were previously provided to all people on Medicare? No. It should help expand as it's, as it's written. Will the health reform law expand the existing Medicare program to cover low-income, uninsured adults regardless of whether they have children? Yes. Did I read it wrong? Medicaid. I said Medicare. Will the health reform law provide financial help to low- and moderate-income Americans who don't get insurance through their jobs to help them purchase coverage? Yes. Will the health reform law prohibit insurance companies from denying coverage because of a person's medical history or health conditions? Yes. It'll help prohibit the law for the insurance to, to, to where they can get the services. These questions in there, they, these are in there. We've got a survey. I would love for you guys to fill out this survey as we're going to use it for our for um, our needs is help becoming, as a statewide voice of recovery, we want to pass on this information to the national level and also to the directors of the Department of Mental Health. Uh, we, we want to help serve you as best we can, so if you take time to fill out that survey. Um, affordable health care, as it sits, you know, we started off, uh, and I'd like to ask that question. Do you guys feel like you have a little bit better understanding than it, besides just being socialized medicine or Obamacare? There's some, there are some good things about affordable health care. Do you guys think so? Yeah. There, there are some good things out there. But as, as I was at the beginning of this year, I was like, what is affordable health care? I mean, when I thought about it, I thought about Obamacare and socialized medicine. I was like, I'm, I, had, I was very negative. But once I started reading about what affordable health care was and what it really was meant to be, it was to help the underprivileged, those that are already receiving services that are getting denied services because they had pre-existing issues or conditions. It is set up for those individuals that can't afford, those that are still receiving services and are being denied because of one reason or another, and those that can't receive services because they're in more of a rural setting. It is designed to be a good thing. Once again, when politics gets involved, you hear a lot of slanderous statements like the gentleman said they become a, a, a mechanism for political bashing. I would encourage that we look through the politics of it and see what the root of affordable health care is because it's set up as a system, provide a system of care, like a recovery-oriented system of care that we, we told you about that's person-centered, community-based. Affordable health care started that way, and if we can get past the word Obama and look to the individual in a way it's going to serve them, I really believe in my heart of hearts you guys will find some good information. If you want some more information, don't hesitate to ask. Are each of you in the room aware of community health centers, our mm -hmm. FQHCs, federally right. qualified health centers? There's about 130 across the state of Missouri. They are also listed on the Missouri Recovery Network website or on the Missouri Primary Care Association website. And they, um, individuals who do not have insurance or low income can go in and get, get um, physical, um, 
if they have, yeah, if they have a physical impairment, they can go and get help. If they have, if they need some type of oral care, they can they can go in and get help. So make sure you utilize your FQHCs, or your community health centers, throughout the state of Missouri. That's why they're there. They're getting federal funds so they can help these individuals who do not currently have insurance.